Hello everyone, Jared here, and in today's video, we're leaving Kai Li for Sandu, where we're going to go ahead and take the high speed rail over to Chaoxing Village. This was going to be an exhaustive day, and so we spent some time trying to get us a taxi, but that ended up failing, so we took a Didi or a Chinese Uber and ended up passing by some beautiful scenery in the mountains for about an hour's ride south along the highway before we eventually got off and found ourselves in pretty much the middle of nowhere with a small village that was really the smallest we'd come across so far in China to this point and ended up going even further out into the sticks before finally seeing the high-speed rail track and pulling up to the station. Well, we successfully arrived at our first station when heading out of Kaili to heading to Zhaoxing Village. And it was a little difficult to get a car. It took us about half an hour talking with the staff at our hotel to be able to figure out what kind of vehicle we could use. Ended up getting a Didi, which thankfully was very nice for a drive down here. And took over an hour for us to drive down. but. It's a very small station, not many people come here, and our next destination is going to be Tsongjiang, I believe, and once we're there, it's going to be another bit of a journey to find our hotel in Zhaoxing. And truly, this was the smallest station we'd been in at this point in China. It looked like the size of a typical train station back in the US, with only one room and one floor. But what ended up happening here was... A girl who you just saw was sitting next to us and she wanted to practice her English with us while we waited for the train to arrive. And so, after just waiting there for maybe another hour or so, we learned a little bit about the area from her and we ended up heading on up to this platform where we stood by our car's number on the ground and waited for it to pull on up while looking at the view in the distance behind. This is the most remote station, remote place in China we've been so far on the trip. There's a high-speed rail that's apparently only been here for just over two years, and you can really tell that not many people use it, and there's not much around, except just good scenery. The little amount of scenery that we could see from this train ride was nice. However, just like most of our trips on trains throughout the rest of China, we were quickly back in tunnels, so this black screen outside the windows was pretty much all we were able to see. However, once we did finally pull out of the mountains again and into the valley where the village was going to be located, we did get some nice views of some fields before making our stop at Tsongjiang Railway Station. We have arrived at Tsongjiang Station and now we get to begin our ride over to Zhaoxing Village. And shortly thereafter, our train that we were on left us behind to continue on its journey. So in the meantime, once the train finished passing by, we looked out across the way and saw this wonderful site with buildings that are stylized after the Dong Minority architecture. Once we were out of the station, however, I tried to get us a taxi or Didi, but that wasn't working. So we followed all these tourists over to the buses, which then proceeded to take us into the village where we were planning to stay for the day. And after getting a ticket, which we didn't know we needed to purchase to go inside the village, the bus dropped us off at this bus stop right outside the village. Well, we've just arrived at Zhaoxing Village, and we get dropped off. No clear idea of where we should be going at all. And I have to use Baidu using the Chinese name of the hotel and plugging that in to try to find out if it is, in fact, where we are meant to be going. I don't think that this is quite developed enough for most foreign tourists, especially if you don't know any Chinese. I wouldn't really recommend trying to go here without any kind of uh, Chinese guide. We ended up wandering around the village trying to figure out where to go, walked underneath a bridge, and over this one straight ahead, because according to Baidu Maps, or their version of Google Maps, that was where we needed to be heading. And we have all of this luggage we have to walk to our hotel now. Shouldn't be too long from here. And boy was I wrong about that. We ended up not really having an easy time finding our hotel as you're about to see. Here is definitely not meant for suitcases, especially large ones like what we have. 
since we've been carrying these things around with us. At least it's a little smoother now, but I don't recommend big suitcases for anybody trying to do this. We ended up walking at least a few hundred meters along this path that was really rocky, really bumpy, and hard to maneuver on with our luggage before deciding we're just gonna stop on the side and try figuring out where exactly we need to go and how much walking it is further to our hotel before noticing that there's apparently a shuttle that takes us on by closer to our hotel. So we decided we'd hop on to this golf cart that you see here and we moved on up through the village. But unfortunately, it ended up not taking us to where we were hoping. In fact, it not only took us past our destination, according to where our hotel was on Baidu Maps, it took us entirely outside of the village. And so we ended up having to wait for the driver to make the return trip going back down. And so he headed right back on down through all of the village that we just passed and back to where we started. So that ended up being a little waste of time for us as well. After wandering around a little more, trying to figure out what to do next, we were stumped because there was no clear indication of where our hotel was supposed to be. So rather than carry our luggage around anywhere else, my father decided he'd stay in the same spot while I went around looking at places that the hotel could potentially be at. And after wandering for a while and coming back, my father happened to be in a conversation with someone. This woman you see right here, who went by the English name of Ivy. She ended up helping us find our hotel for the evening, and upon arrival, we had an issue. Apparently, our room wasn't booked, according to the owner. But after a few minutes, we were able to figure everything out, get ourselves a room, drop everything off upstairs, and check it out. And we were a little worried about what the quality of the hotel would be like in such a rural place, but it ended up being just fine for us. And luckily, it also had room-controlled AC. There is our toilet and bathroom and shower area. Could be worse. Much better than what I was expecting it to be. More Western, more standard. Yeah, definitely better than my bathroom in Wuhan. So, we made our way outside the front door of our hotel and saw that there were all of these tables being set up with lots of elaborate dishes all over the place, only to learn that there was a wedding ceremony going on amongst the locals. But, rather than stick around, we decided to move around the village with Ivy, checking out the sights of Zhaoxing Village. And immediately, the one thing that stood out to us was this pagoda, which is one of many, and is symbolic of the Dong minority's culture. If you come to Zhaoxing Village, you'll see these all over the place, and they're quite the sight. Moving on from there, we crossed the water and found our way moving back towards where we'd been struggling with our suitcases earlier, because that's where a lot of the shops and other sites were in Zhaoxing Village. Walking alongside Ivy, I was able to learn a bit about where she was from and about her job as an English teacher in Guangdong province which is why she was able to speak English so well and help us out so much. She'd also already spent several days here already, so she knew the place fairly well, and took us along the path you're seeing right here to look at all the shops with all the local minority-based merchandise that sold throughout the village. However, we felt that we really needed to pay Ivy back for helping us figuring out our hotel situation. So we took her out to the restaurant you see right here where we ended up getting two large hot pot dishes. This first one was a tomato-based soup and was full of local vegetables, as well as chicken. And this was the only dish that I ended up eating because the other one was this hot pot, which had a giant fish inside of it. And I'm not really one for seafood, but at least it was something that Ivy enjoyed. And as you can see, we ate a whole lot and really stuffed ourselves. Before we headed back on out to the streets, and off to the last thing we were going to see for today, because Ivy told us we needed to absolutely go with her to see something. So it's finally starting to get dark. We just ended our dinner here with Ivy, and now we're going to go ahead and get our cameras before we head off to see some show. And we were actually completely caught by surprise because we didn't know that there were any shows to see here in Zhaoxing Village. But unfortunately, once the sun went down, we were a little late to the start of the show, so we were situated somewhere in the back and didn't get quite the best view. 
However, we still ended up in time to be able to see everything. And I have a little bit of it for you to see right now, too. One performance we were definitely not expecting to see next was a play dedicated to the story of some romantic tragedy. And it wasn't exactly the easiest thing for us to follow either. The clip I just showed you was probably one of the highlights because at least that one had music that was easy enough for us to follow. Apparently at some point they dragged somebody out into the forest to have him executed before I guess celebrating the guy's death? I don't really know what happened. But it wasn't too long after that before we were back to the musical and dance performances. So here you go. So, perhaps you would think that the fireworks would be the end of the performance, but actually this was just part way through. It was a long night, with just a few highlights. And after ending this part with a wrestling match, that ended up bringing this performance to a close. Which honestly for us couldn't have come sooner, because we were exhausted at this point. Also, this was probably out of all the performances we'd seen traveling around China, easily the worst one. Although I think that is largely due to the bountiful audio issues during the performances. Apparently they have lots of different shows throughout the year, so maybe we just ended up not getting one of the great ones. But anyways, after the show was over, it was hard for us to also get out of there back to the hotel because immediately we were surrounded by people doing a musical number and dancing holding hands in this circle. 
but we were shortly able to find our way out, say goodbye to Ivy, and head off back to our hotel for the night. We are finally back in our hotel room here in Zhaoxing, and boy was it a day. Took us a while, we were thankfully helped by Ivy, and now we're finally ready for some rest. And then we're able to explore Zhaoxing some more tomorrow. So, I hope that you found this first day of our time here in Zhaoxing interesting. And in the next video, we'll be continuing our time here in Zhaoxing. So, I hope you're looking forward to seeing it. Until next time. Thank you again for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Also, please share this channel with others so we can make the channel grow together as I continue to put out more videos.